Just going to do a bit of a crush course guide to some of the biscuit tan colours applicable to the Jaguar cars in terms of the materials on offer and the original colours used. Some of these colours were used in other cars that we manufacture trim for, think Triumphs and Heelys and MGAs, uh, but in terms of the materials that are laid out here, some of these are only applicable to Jaguar, which I'll go over. It's also worth noting, keep in mind, sort of camera settings, light settings, etc. You may not get a completely true and accurate reading of these shades uh, via this video. Um, obviously, we always recommend physical samples. We ship samples all over the world, all the time. 90% of the orders that we do, we uh, ship samples for, and even a load of ones that never get confirmed, we still ship samples for. We like to take pride in the fact that we make our kits to order and the last thing we want to do is make a kit for someone on the other side of the world or even a mile down the road and it would be the wrong colour for them. So physical samples are always a very, very wise idea, uh, but this video is just as a bit of guidance. So starting here on your left, this is what we refer to as Biscuit Light Tan. Now that's an internal John Skinner name effectively mixes and merges two colours, uh, biscuit and light tan. When I say two colours, it's actually the same colour, but different companies used the two different names. So Jaguar, for example, used uh, biscuit in their name a lot, uh, whereas Triumph used light tan. So we refer to it as biscuit light tan. That should not be uh, confused with the Jaguar light tan that they used on the very early E-type flat floors, which was a lot more of a sort of orangey, uh, tan sunset sort of color. So this is biscuit light tan. What we've got, we've got vinyl here and leather just sat on top. Now this is the grained version of the leather. We can also offer a smooth version of the leather as well, which I'll come to in a second. So as you can see, they're good matches for one another. They're not 100%, you'll never get that. The dyeing process for them, albeit very similar, is different. You know, uh, vinyl is a PVC man-made material, whereas leather is a natural material from cowhide. So the dyeing process is different. You know, it's the equivalent of going down to a DIY store, getting a tin of paint and painting three or four different random bits of material around your house and expecting them to be the exact same color when it all comes out. It's now and impossible, but bear in mind when everything's sewn together, you normally have elements of piping going through them, etc. When it's all put together, they will match very nicely and it'll be a very seamless finish with that. So just bear that in mind. We've been doing this a long time. We get asked the same questions all of the time regarding this, um, but when it's all said and done in the car, it normally ties in very nicely. You then have for the Jaguars, this Hardura material. Hardura, they commonly used in sort of high wear areas at the back of the car. So often the boot trunk liners were in Hardura, also some of the rear bulkheads, etc. And effectively what it is, is it's a PVC material with a graining on it to sort of imitate vinyl and leather. And then it had a felt backing to it there, as you can see. Moquette. Moquette is a very thin carpet-like material. So it's a wool-based material, very uh, high quality. Uh, but it's a very short pile to it, unlike carpet, which is slightly longer. So that was used commonly by Jaguar on the backs of the front seats for the XK range and the early E-types, some of the saloons. Um, it was also used in the sort of wheel arch areas on the car as well, where vinyl uh, or leather would not lie as nicely, wouldn't fit as nicely, and so they used that uh, in those areas. You then had wool carpets. So this is deluxe wool, uh, very premium. When it comes to certain colours, you have not necessarily an exact matching corresponding carpet. You might have a few choices. Biscuit is a prime example of that. We've got two main obvious choices, but in fact, actually a third if I steal this. So what you have here on the left, we have what we refer to as honey, which is probably the most logical match for Biscuit. Then you have Palomino, which I would say is actually by far and away the most popular colour choice for Biscuit. And then you have cinnamon, which is darker, a bit browner, and again, works very nicely. It's also worth noting with carpets that obviously they get edged in a leather cloth material. Now, leather cloth, we haven't got here, but it's effectively vinyl. It's just got a different backing to it. And that was originally what they used uh, back in the day to edge carpets of this era. So these carpets here, no matter which color you went for, 
we would suggest that you normally edge it to match the main trim. So in this case, it would be biscuit perhaps, uh, and it would edge it there. And it just gives a nice subtle contrast in the color, but then gives a nod to the main interior trim color. And this is why we, on our website, we refer to things as primary materials and secondary materials. Primary, mater primary materials, rather, um, are things like the vinyl, leather cloth, and the leather, i.e. what is the majority of your car made uh, from inside? And that's those two materials plus leather cloth. Then you have secondary materials, so things like the hardura, the moquette, and the carpets. Um, the secondary materials, you don't get as wide a choice as you do primary and they were there to either match in some cases or complement. So you don't want a car that has everything matching all the way through. Uh, you want these tonal contrasts going through the car. And this is what uh, things like the carpets and the moquettes and the hard durers offer, especially the, the carpets and moquette materials because they are wall based. And again, refer back to that earlier comment in terms of um, dyeing. The dyeing process for a wall based product is radically different to vinyl or leather. So you're never going to get the exact same color. And we get so many people that, you know, they, they want their vinyls, their leathers, fair enough, you want them to match. And then the carpets to be an exact match. And you, you don't want that. It, one, it's almost impossible. But two, you want that tonal difference. Otherwise everything just merges into one another. Uh, so just really bear that in mind. It was the way they did it originally and it's the way it's done these days as well. So if you ask any color experts, you know, whether it be Pantone or or whatever, they will say the exact same thing. Interior design in houses is a very similar concept. You want that tonal finish in there. Um, not to be uh, sexist per se, but I would always get the opinion of a female. I certainly uh, know from my experience with my wife, but also uh, generally over the years with our customers, ladies tend to have a much better eye for the way these things work than, than us gents. So just bear that in mind. So, like I say, these are the three main options for the biscuit, light tan, primary to secondary. Moving on, we have cinnamon. Now cinnamon, you know, tonally, definitely a shade darker, obviously. Goes into that kind of tan realm. Cinnamon is an antique color. So this was used, uh, was used by Jaguar and Triumph, actually. And what it has is it has this black mottled effect. This is the vinyl here. So you can see it has this black streaking through it. It, it kind of gives that effect of aging. And uh, the principle being, you know, if you spill some tea or coffee on a piece of white paper, then let it dry. It goes light and dark, light and dark over the course of it when it's drying and it creates this mottled effect on it. Um, that's what they refer to when it's antiquing. So this was a, uh, originally used with the Connolly Vomals back in the day. So the, the vinyl's very obvious with that, as you can see. And then the leather, it's more subtle, but it is there. You can kind of see black splodges throughout. Over the course of a hide, it's really obvious. So over the course of a seat, you will see it. And so they did offer a few colors like that Jaguar. Triumph only used the, the, uh, the cinnamon in their range, but uh, Jaguar used old beige, old gray, cinnamon, russet red. They all had that same element to it, uh, old gray as well, uh, French blue as well. Uh, so Jaguar used that fairly frequently. On that so you have the graining on there the vinyls and the leather cloths exactly the same then the leather like i say it's a lot more subtle so with that you don't get it's a completely different grain to say what we refer to as grained so when you're looking on our website and things effectively you've got three uh, finishes on leather you've got grained smooth which a lot of colors uh, go between which i'll show you in a second then you had a third contingent, which was antique. There is a very limited range of antique colors, but they are available. So that's that version there. When it comes to the secondary materials for cinnamon, you have cinnamon hardura, which as you can see is very close match, cinnamon wool and cinnamon moquette. Again, I would say with cinnamon, you could toy with the idea. We have done it before of using Palomino and obviously it'd be edged in the cinnamon. Uh, it works quite nicely. So again, think of those tonals. Um, and I would say the thing to consider if you are going to step outside the realm of the obvious ones here, if you do go to say Palomino for the carpet, you may wish to consider the biscuit moquette as opposed to the cinnamon moquette. But 
let's speak about that sort of contingent because it, it really can change the dynamic of your car and it depends how much moquette and carpet was used in your car as well. You know, the XKs tended to use quite a lot and the early E-types did, but then they kind of phased out uh, the moquette. So it really does depend on what car you've got, but we're here to help with those elements of things. Then going slightly darker, this is what we've referred to as new tan. Again, that's an internal John Skinner name. A lot of people out there just refer to it as tan. We put the new on there to again incorporate uh, other cars that use this color. So Jaguar used this and just referred to it as tan normally. Uh, they used it on the XKs, they used it on the E-types and the saloons. Triumph also used this color and they, on, mainly on the TR6s, um, they refer to this as new tan. So this is why we put the new there to kind of incorporate both of them in there. And what you can see here is we've got the vinyl again with the graining on it. Then you've got the grained leather here. And then for the first time in this video, smooth leather. So as you can see, it doesn't have much of a graining to it at all. It's uh, very subtle compared to the grained leather. So we can, for most colors, we can offer grained or smooth. And then for very limited ones, antiqued. Um, so see our website for details. Not all colors are available in smooth. Same with grained, but the majority are available in both. So you can see there, Again, a very coherent color mix between the, the three there. Obviously you wouldn't use all three at the same time. You'd either use those two or smooth and vinyl there. And then going to the hard Jura, again, very obvious match there. You have the carpets there and the moquette there. So you tend to find that obviously moquettes and carpets are very close in their um, color finish there because the dyeing process is, is very similar. They're both wall-based uh, products, so just bear that in mind. Uh, but again, you know, we have done in the past, uh, used either a cinnamon or a, possibly a palomino with the tan and tone it through. And again, if you did that, you may wish to consider switching up the moquettes accordingly. Uh, so just bear that in mind. Um, so yeah, that's hopefully cleared up a few things. Oh, just to throw a curveball in there as well. We've also got a colour called Ferrari Beige. <laughs> now, so Ferrari Beige, uh, it's in the name, it was used by Ferrari. Uh, this is the leather. We can get vinyl as well. And then obviously that would just tie in with the biscuits tonally for the secondary materials there. So just bear that in mind as well. Um, yeah, so hopefully that shows a lot. I'll just do one final thing where I'll get all the different leather versions together. So you've got... For the grains and things i don't know how clear this will come out but this is the antique one with the kind of black mottled effect to it and then you have smooth there so the smooth and the antique the the grain finishing is very similar um you tend to get a tiny bit more of the actual grain on the antique uh but not much to either of them and then the grain is is very obvious graining there the suitabilities of the grains and smooth obviously suitability of, of the antique goes in hand in hand with the with the smooth but you don't really get a choice if you're going for an antique color you can only get antique leather on it so there's no choice in the grain finish but in terms of t choosing between these two obviously there's the aesthetics to it which is down to each individual person uh the original stuff was probably somewhere slightly in between the two of them but probably more edging towards the smooth for the jaguar range um, practicality wise, grains tends to be a bit longer lasting in terms of looks. They're exactly the same leather. They're exactly the same tannery, absolutely everything. So there's no difference in perceived quality of it. It's purely the finish. Uh, smooth is slightly more expensive. So see our website for details. Um, but basically the grain uh, was introduced uh, by the automotive industry to allow them to use more of a, a cowhide. If you Put a graining on there then it allows you to uh, cover up a few more of the blemishes it makes the hide more usable basically so it's a, it was a trick done by the automotive industry back in that era to allow them to maximize the amount of leather they can use uh, if you uh, looked at natural cow hides in the tannery before any processing they would be very smooth to finish on there so that's something to bear in mind um, obviously when it comes to going in the car, you know, smooth in my opinion, and this is just my opinion, smooth looks absolutely fantastic. It really does. But it's one of those things, it doesn't age quite as well because imagine your seats, for example, front seats. The driver's seat gets sat in a lot over the years. 
And so sort of creasing and wear and tear happens and they will show up more on smooth. Um, it's just the way things go with those sorts of things. Uh, whereas on the grain, obviously it will wear and tear a bit more, but the graining almost hides some of that wear and tear. Same with, you know, if you get in your car with jeans on and it's got a button or a uh, belt or something on there and it catches and snags it, it's more likely to be hidden in the grain than it would the smooth. So uh, it's always worth keeping these factors in mind when you're coming to choose your, uh, your colours and your material finish choices. So that is the long and short of it there. I hope that's helpful. Uh, please do ask any comments um, uh, at the bottom here if you have any questions. I'm more than happy to do uh, different colours and explain things further. So do ask questions, keep it civil though. And uh, yeah, that is the Crash Course Guide, one of many hopefully.